Well, the Archbishop of San Antonio has responded to a community within his territory, the mission of divine mercy that has been claiming to have received uh, revelation from God in multiple messages. In fact, they've released um, about three of them so far. I covered two of them not long with y'all. I'll put a link to that in the show notes where I review them. I read them. We go through it line by line, and then I uh, compare it to what the magisterium teaches and what the saints have said, and we examine it. And, you know, I said, hey, looks like the archbishop really needs to respond to this quickly because they are saying in this message, that Pope Francis isn't the Pope, that he is a usurper. And so effectively, this is a promotion of set of a contism. So he needs to address this immediately. This is, by the way, the same one where we find the first divine emoji. So we have a divine emoji uh, being given to us in a alleged revelation from heaven. Um, where <laughs> I kid you not, there appears to be a smiley face in the text of the message from heaven. Uh, so I've dubbed it the divine emoji prophecy uh, or the divine emoji uh, revelation, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but yes, it's it's one in the same. So um, the archbishop has responded with something official, and I want to review it and then um, recap the situation. But before we do that, I need you to hit the subscribe button. The more people who subscribe, the more YouTube will share this with other people who have not seen the channel. And so if you've benefited from Reason of Theology, if you like the content here and you want other people to benefit from it, hit that subscribe button and the like button. All right. So Archbishop has just uh, released a statement. And again, this is the Archbishop of San Antonio. And <clears throat> here it is. Let's go ahead and dive in. A message from Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Siller concerning the publication of the alleged uh, prophetic messages from the Mission of Divine Mercy on March 15th today. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I write to you. Uh, I write to offer you guidance regarding the recently published alleged prophecies from Reverend John Mary Foster at the Mission of Divine Mercy at Canyon Lake, Texas. Before addressing the many concerns sent to me and the Archdiocesan, Archdiocesan, Archdiocesan officials, Archdiocesan officials, um, I wish to clarify the canonical status of the Mission of Divine Mercy. So he's going to tell us if they're in good standing or not. This is interesting. So... Okay, the mission of Divine Mercy was granted status as an approved Catholic apostolate by Archbishop Gomez on May 19th, 2010. Uh, Reverend John Mary Foster, who is the founder of the apostolate and an incarnated priest of the Archdiocese of San Antonio, has enjoyed a special assignment to serve as the director of the mission of Divine Mercy, MDM. Although he had hoped the apostolate would grow and the number of mission members would increase, this has not occurred. The apostolate consisted of Reverend John Mary Foster, his biological sister and former religious sister, Mary Foster, his cousin, William Rodrigue, his nephew, Joseph Jebia, and a non-family member, Arakeli Granados Gantner. The community is not a canonically erected religious community of either diocesan or pontifical right. So hasn't been um, it's not in good standing with the bishop or the pope. So neither diocesan or pontifical right. So it's not under the bishop or somehow special privileges under the Pope, and its status as a Catholic apostolate of the Archdiocese of San Antonio has been suppressed and revoked by official decree on March 15, 2024, today. So their status has been revoked as of today, no longer in good standing. Additionally, Reverend Foster's faculties to minister have also been removed as of March 15, 2024. So again, 
not in good standing as a community, and Father Foster is not able to minister a lesson. So, of course, some kind of extraordinary circumstance. Um, and, of course, these faculties are needed to licitly celebrate Mass publicly um, or to validly offer confession, you know, among other things. So this is a big deal. This is a really big deal. Since 2009, the mission of Divine Mercy has offered retreats, sacramental ministry, and a peaceful setting for the faithful of God. I have been supportive of their efforts, and I have enjoyed it. Uh, enjoyed a positive relationship with Reverend Foster and the members of the mission of Divine Mercy. The only stipulation I have ever requested of the community in order to prevent any misunderstandings and possible scandal was to refrain from publishing any alleged prophetic uh, prophetic messages or message until they were reviewed to ensure they were not harmful to the people of God. This stipulation was attended to protect the faithful since the alleged prophetic writings include many scandalous claims and false teachings. I don't know if he's just talking about what they currently are putting out, or if he's saying they have been doing this, they have been submitting things to him in private, they haven't released it, but they've been submitting things and they have been scandalous and false and he has therefore rejected them and not allowed for their publication. I don't know which one he's saying here. So it could be that this has been an ongoing problem um, or it could be that this is a new thing. Until just recently, the members of the Mission of Divine Mercy had been obedient to my request. So until recently, they were listening to them. Whatever was being submitted to them, they were listening. Now, I have to assume if they weren't actually publicly publishing stuff and they were submitting stuff to them, well, it would follow that it had to be stuff that was scandalous and had false teachings in it. On February 28th, 2024, Reverend Foster published an alleged prophetic message from a member of the MDM community. I contacted Reverend Foster the same day and requested that he remove the post on the website. I mean, he he's Johnny on the spot. <laughs> I'm a little surprised he contacted him. Same day. Good job. That's efficient. I, I like that. I contacted Reverend Foster the same day and requested that he remove the post on the website on March 5th, 2024. I met with Reverend Foster for more than an hour, praying together and discussing the false teachings contained in the post and Reverend Foster's oath of fidelity to the church and duty of obedience to me, which oath and duty he has reaffirmed each year during the Chrism Mass since his incarnation in 2009. So in other words, he's being disobedient to the oath of fidelity, his oath to the bishop, and it contains false teachings. Now pay attention to that because there are some people out there, Catholics, who are peddling this stuff as if it could be authentic. And yet, it's very clearly not. It is promoting set of a contism. It has false teachings in it. It seems to be... To have some heretical aspects of, of the Trinity to it, in the way I read it, aside from how silly the thing is overall, um, divine emoji notwithstanding. So <clears throat> pay attention to that. This is important. On March 7th, 2024, I repeated my direct request to him to remove these publications from the Mission of Divine Mercy website and social media. To begin assisting in repairing the confusion. I mean, how can how can you repair this kind of confusion at this point? I don't know, but okay. Um, to begin assisting in repairing the confusion, bewilderment and damage caused by these alleged prophecies. On March 13th, 2024, the third alleged prophetic message was widely published. We had not had a chance yet to review that one, but he's going to quote from it here in a moment. Reverend Foster, in the statement he posted on the website of the Mission of Divine Mercy entitled, We Must Obey God, heard that one before, right? Outright admits his disobedience to Pope Francis and his ordinary and cites the following reasons which he believes justifies his actions. And now what you're going to hear is literally what the Protestant reformers were saying. 
And it's literally what every schismatic in church history ever says to justify their schismatic behavior. Every single time, this is what they say. So watch this. We know that many people are concerned that the mission of divine mercy is being disobedient to our archbishop in publishing these messages, and that our disobedience discredits these messages. This is a very legitimate concern. The key question is, are we obeying God? Uh, answer, no, you're not. We should always obey God. And normally, we should obey legitimate human authorities, but only in those cases where human authorities are acting in accord with God's law. Martin Luther, all over again, all over again. Protestant reformers, all over again. This was their excuse. This was their card that they pulled to do everything that they did, which I'll show you the problem with it again in a moment. There are occasions, as the church has clearly taught, when we are called to obey God, even though it means disobeying human authorities. Right. Whenever the human authority tells you to do something sinful, you cannot obey that. However, the bishop did not ask you to do anything sinful. We see many examples in the life of our Lord himself, as we discussed below. Is our situation one of those occasions? We are making three claims that may be shocking to many. That these messages are coming from God. They are prophetic messages. That the church is facing an extreme crisis beyond any she has faced before. Because as a message we re re recently published says, the usurper is sitting in the chair of my Peter who is carrying out the great treason. This extreme crisis calls for extreme measures. And three, given this extreme crisis, we are obeying God. We are obeying God in publishing these messages, even without our archbishop's permission. I would add number four to that. I would add number four that is shocking to many. We now have the first message from heaven containing a divine emoji. That needs to be number four in there. But again, I'm going to put that one to the side. Um, <laughs> His Excellency continues in the, his document, Father Foster, in his own words, and by quoting the alleged prophetic messages, refers to Pope Francis as the usurper and writes, in summary, we must always obey God. Normally obeying God includes obeying the authorities of the church. But we are living in an unprecedented unprecedented crisis. This is what they always say. God is telling us that the throne of Peter is occupied by a usurper. Sound familiar? Again, Protestant reformers. And we must not submit to him nor those who are carrying out his unjust designs. Again, Martin Luther all over again. Father Foster publicly declares his obedience to church authority and encourages others to do the same. When superiors are actively committing or commanding grave evil, one is not obliged to obey them. We don't believe our archbishop intends to do evil. We believe he is good-hearted. But he is enthusiastically following Bergoglio, as all can call him. It's actually pronounced Bergoglio, but I just cannot get that interpretation out of my mind because of Altman. But okay. Whom we do believe is trying to subvert the church. Conscious of my duty to exercise government over the ministries of the archdiocese and prudently leads the Christian and prudently lead the Christian faithful of the archdiocese. I cannot allow any further confusion, grave scandal to descend upon the faithful of God. And so I have removed Reverend Foster's faculties from public ministry in the archdiocese of San Antonio. I pray that Reverend Foster will work with me to repair the damage. How can it be repaired at this point? And that has caused and find a path forward for his ministry. I'm sorry, how can he repair that and move forward for his ministry? I think once you cross this line, there's no more opportunity for ministry in the future. But that's my opinion. That's I'm obviously not the bishop or archbishop in this case. I'm not any of the above. So it's not up to me. But if it were up to me, I would say, yeah, you're done. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, you can't come back. Oh, you're sorry? Great. I'm so happy that you're sorry. I totally accept your apology. You can't come back to ministry. Uh, you cross a line that just cannot be crossed. Now, let's tackle this issue. I know I covered it last time, but I want to recover it again this time. So if your superior commands you to do something in and of itself sinful, you are correct. You have to listen to God, not men. Then you can pull that card. The archbishop did not ask them to do anything sinful. But they're going to say, but God asked us to publish this. And you're telling us not to. We have to obey God, not man. This is, again, Protestantism. This is not Catholic theology. In Catholic theology, 
If God is going to disclose a message of revelation, he is going to ordinarily do so through his bishops, and therefore there will be approval of the bishops. Now, there are exceptions, very rare exceptions. If you don't have ordinary ministry, if you don't have an ordinary mission, so you don't have the bishop backing up this message, there is an exception here. And that is, as DeSales points out, if you have extraordinary mission. Now, how can you claim extraordinary mission? Well, if you can prove that you have this mission through miracles, because God ordinarily speaks through his ministers, through his bishops, but if the message is going to indict the bishops, as it does in this case, because it indicts not only Pope Francis as a usurper, but most of the bishops throughout the world. So if the message allegedly from heaven is going to indict the very people who would approve of your message, God makes a provision here for you through extraordinary mission. What's that provision? He backs up your claims with miracles. Now, has this community produced any miracles? No. Other than they have brought us the first divine emoji, setting aside that miracle. No, they have not produced any legitimate miracles. So until then, they cannot claim extraordinary mission. So until then, they have no authority to say, God is telling us to do this. Because the way that you know God is speaking to you is, number one, the, it's going to be either validated by the bishops or validated by miracles. If you don't have either, congrats. You're Protestant now. This is Protestantism. When you take your own conscience over and against the magisterium, over and against those who have ordinary mission, that's exactly what Luther was saying at the Diet of Worms. That's Protestantism. So these guys are Protestant, they just haven't figured it out yet. It's kind of like your non-denominational Christians who are either Baptists or Pentecostals. They just haven't figured it out yet. So they call themselves non-denominational, but in fact, they're not non-denominational. They're either Baptist or Pentecostal. But eventually they'll figure it out, hopefully. But until then, they're they're in this confused state. That's what is going on with this group. They're in that confused state. They're they're essentially Protestant at their core. They just haven't figured it out yet. Um, and they still have enough of a Catholic veneer around them for it to be harder for the average person to, to see. But at the end of the day, at the core, in the way that they handle authority, it's Protestant. And they're reinventing the wheel. They're reinventing all of the mistakes of the reformers. And it's just, it's not just the reformers. I mean, you have this with other schismatic groups. Now, I want to show you something from the Code of Canon Law. The reason why I'm saying this is schismatic behavior um, is because if you look at the Code of Canon Law, it defines schism as <clears throat> Canon 751. Schism is the refusal of submission to the Supreme Pontiff or of communion with the members of the church subject to him. So schism can be an act where you refuse to submit to the Pope or you're refusing to submit to the uh, local ordinary. Now, of course, uh, the bishop has not yet declared them to be in schism. But materially, schism is already there. Have they become formally a schismatic community yet? Uh, we'll we'll see. Um, but I do want to point this out. They are certainly subject to the Code of Canon Law, Canon 1373, which I wouldn't be surprised if the uh, archbishop ends up pulling on them. It says, a person who publicly incites hatred or animosity against the apostolic see or the ordinary because of some act of ecclesial office or duty or who provokes disobedience against them is to be punished by interdict or other just penalties. That right there, they fit that description. So they are right there within the crosshairs of Canon 1373, among others. And so I suspect this isn't over. He's going to try to give them a little bit more time. He suspended um, the priest faculties. They're no longer in good standing as far as a community. And I imagine he's going to give them a little bit more time. And I, I again, I suspect that if they don't uh, respond 
properly, he is going to take further action against them, as he should. Uh, good for him. Good for him for addressing this stuff and how pitiful it is that there are Catholics out there peddling this garbage. I saw a group of people on YouTube the other day. They have a really large platform. It was a priest and another guy. And they were they were telling their audience that there's this alleged prophecy, right? And it's alleged. We don't know if it's authentic or not. But then they go on to promote the thing as if they really think it's likely to be authentic. And they tell their audience all about the message, except the most central theme to the message, which is set of a contism that Pope Francis is a usurper. They conveniently left that message out, didn't tell that to their audience, peddled this nonsense, <laughs> and conveniently didn't tell their audience that the community was posting this stuff in disobedience to their bishop. I'm just amazed that we are so inclined and so sympathetic to set of a contism now. It's incredible. Set of a contism is the view that currently there is no one who occupies the chair of St. Peter. So if you believe that Pope Francis isn't Pope, and you don't claim that there is another pro person who is Pope, by definition, you're a set of a contist. And it seems that has become a very popular view now, and we're now giving it a pass. There's no problem with it. Even if we're not personally on board with it, we're really sympathetic to it. But it's schism. It's the voice of the devil. And it is, again, a reproduction of the very same errors that the Protestant reformers committed over 500 years ago. The serpent is just reproducing the same problems and the same schemes over and over and over. And there are enough people out there who are ignorant enough to buy into this stuff. And again, it's being peddled by people with a veneer of Catholicism. So for the average person, it seems like it's Catholic, but in reality, it's anything but. So be warned, be aware. This is not a message from heaven. If it were, first of all, it wouldn't have a divine emoji. I just have to, just, I'm sorry. I just, God's not texting us, okay? He's not sending us emojis. Number two, if that message is going to indict the bishops, I could totally understand, well, yeah, of course the bishops aren't going to approve of something that indicts them right. So in that case, God would validate the message through miracles, but these guys don't have any miracles. Aside from the fact that they're able to convince people of set of a contism, that is a miracle in and of itself. So maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But you know what I mean. They, they haven't produced any actual miracles. So basically, this is schismatic. It is not from God. This is contrary to God. And I'll tell you this. If this is not from God, and it very clearly is not from God, it's absolutely blasphemous because it claims to speak from God in, in the first person. Not to mention, again, the modalism implicit in the text, a Trinitarian uh, heresy in there. So anyways, I hope y'all found this helpful. Please share this with other people because I promise you the dissenters, many of them are very active in evangelizing people to this set of a contest position. They're very active on YouTube. Help me reach those other people with more information that they may not be aware of. You can do that by hitting the like button, the subscribe button and commenting. All right, that's going to do it. See you later. God bless. Hey friends, do you want others to discover why the Catholic Church is the church that Jesus established? And do you want to help people make sense of all the confusion in the Catholic Church today? Help contribute to this mission by supporting Reason and Theology at patreon.com forward slash reason and theology. By doing so, you'll also get access to exclusive content for patrons only. Also, if you want to deepen your faith, there are free ebooks and even courses that you can sign up for by visiting reason.podia.com. Have you ever heard someone say that Pope Francis denied the existence of hell or Pope Francis worshipped an idol in the Vatican Gardens? There are many claims that have been made about Pope Francis for over a decade, and many of them are inaccurate. I've set the record straight in my free ebook called Top 10 Lies About Pope Francis Exposed. Get your free copy today by visiting reason.podia.com. Are you a Catholic thinking about converting to Eastern Orthodoxy? 
Or are you a Protestant discerning whether or not to become Catholic or Eastern Orthodox? If so, I have the book just for you. It's called Answering Orthodoxy and engages all of the arguments that Eastern Orthodox use against the Catholic Church. I respond to all of them. I show that they are in error and in fact they're inconsistent because the things that Orthodox are objecting to are in fact found in their own tradition. So the fullness of the faith can only be found in the Catholic Church. Check out the book right now at shop.catholic.com for your